All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Simple our weekly broadcast here at Simple Scrapper. And right now we are right in the middle of a very special event. It's called the Festival of Finishing. This is a month long celebration of moving past procrastination and getting things done in our scrapbooking. And I am so excited to be leading today's session on how to complete any unfinished scrapbook project. I've got a free worksheet for you, and I am so excited to dive in and walk you through step-by-step step how you can wrap your brain around getting those projects done that have sat untouched, unloved, and perhaps unappreciated for so long. Because I know they're weighing on you, and you want to get them finished. You want to get those memories documented, get those stories into albums, so that you can move on and feel that sense of freedom and lightness and have the fun and excitement of starting something new. I don't want you to be held back by the projects that have been left undone. So if you're new here, my name is Jennifer Wilson and I am your guide here at Simple Scrapper. I started Simple Scrapper in 2008 as a way to document my own journey in this modern world of memory keeping. And at the time, I thought that digital scrapbooking was gonna be the way to simplicity. That's what everybody was gonna be doing. But it turns out using digital techniques is just one of the many, many ways that you can personalize a hobby that fills you up and fits your life. So here at Simple Scrapper, we focus on helping you, you know, customize and personalize a path that is purposeful and intentional and of most importantly, fun and stress free for you. And I come to you live here each week so that we can dive deep into a specific topic of scrapbooking. And during this series, we're talking all about scrapbook projects, why they don't get finished, how you can get them finished, and how you can start more projects that are finishable. And we'll get into that next week. But today, I am so excited to really dive in to a process that I've been using for several years now on breaking down projects into pieces. And I've got a brand new worksheet for you. So if you're here in our Crowdcast classroom, which I hope you are, there's a green button that says free finishing worksheet. And you can right click that to open a new tab or window so you can see the PDF or depending on what computer you're on, it might automatically download it. It's a printable PDF worksheet that you can use to follow along today and to customize your own finishing plan. But if you're watching live on YouTube or Facebook or you're watching the replay in one of those locations, I'd love if you jumped over to the Crowdcast link because that's where you can download your free worksheet and by signing up for the Festival of Finishing, you'll get notifications about our upcoming events in this series and all future episodes of Simple Scrapper Live. So I hope you join us in Crowdcast. It's a really fun environment. We've got a chat room going. There's a place where you can ask questions. And it just makes it a really kind of warm, supportive environment, you know, almost as close to being here live as you can be. And I, I love interacting with my weekly audience. All right, so one thing that I wanna talk about before we get into this finishing plan is some of the observations that I've made so far on finishing projects. And I've got, a, I've got three different ones. The first one is, is to really underscore the importance of focus. You know how to scrapbook. And so finishing is really a matter of saying, this is what I'm finishing, and I call that clarity you're crystal clear on this is the one thing you're finishing, and then you're focused. You are staying, your eyes are on that prize of that one project that you're finishing, and though you may dabble in other things, go about your everyday life, you're gonna keep coming back and moving forward with that sense of focus on your project. And I, one of the observations that I made this past week, we had a, a member pajama party this Friday night, and that's, when you can kind of let go and just relax into it. So I scrapbooked live in front of, you know, uh, I think we had 30 or 40 of our members on live and 80 or so registered. And, you know, I had a little like nerves behind it. Of, I'm scrapbooking live and folks are watching me, but I just let go. And the layout that I made, I absolutely love. 
And so when I just kind of relaxed into the process, I was able to finish a layout that had been sitting on my desk for a few weeks, just kind of a pile of supplies, and I could just get it done. All right, the next observation I have is that oftentimes we can get overwhelmed at the photo portion of a project because there's so many photos and we have to make decisions. And in going back through my own photos, last week you may know that I talked about December daily and holiday scrapbooking projects, I started looking through my 2014 photos. And I was so surprised by the difference in perspectives that I had, that the, photo, the reasons that I felt overwhelmed back then were totally different. I actually time selecting the photos, but now it's because I think so many are so adorable because my daughter is two years younger, or almost three years younger, and um, it's just so amazing to see the changes in that time. And while I still have to make those hard decisions, the kind of perfectionism that I had placed on it in the past about the quality of my photos wasn't there anymore. I didn't care that they were grainy or that they were in low light or they had a yellow tone. I just cared about how cute that, how cute my daughter looked and how much it means to me to have those memories. So if you have trouble sometimes getting back into a project, I want you to like take that seed with you that when you can start looking at those pictures again, particularly ones from a year or more ago, they're going to tug at your heartstrings and you're going to be really excited to get those scrapbooked. All right, and then I have one final observation. And that's, this came to me related to reading, but it 100% applies to scrapbooking. I've been kind of, I'm not like the most avid reader, but I enjoy reading. It's why I host a book club here at Simple Scrapper on nonfiction books. And I had found that I was waiting to feel relaxed to start reading like waiting for that time, which I had an open window and that I was feeling, you know, just restful and I can just go sit in bed and read. And big surprise, that time often didn't show up. And when it did, it, when it, did it was few and far between. And then maybe I was so relaxed I wanted to just go to sleep. So I discovered that when I was feeling tense or anxious, that's actually the best time for me to dive into reading because it relaxes me. And some of you who have no trouble reading, this is you know, no surprise to you, but the same thing can be applied to scrapbooking. If you're waiting to feel kind of relaxed or in the creative moment and ready to invest time in yourself and, and already in kind of that um, fulfilling spirit, then you may be waiting for a long time. But instead, when you're busy and you're stressed and all you wish you could do is relax, that's when you should just jump in to your scrapbooking, whether that's finishing a project or or just because it can help create that desired feeling. So this was a big light bulb moment for me around reading and I hope it's helpful for you around scrapbooking. All right. So let's dive into the, wor the worksheet and I'm gonna walk you through how you can complete any project. And the first thing I wanna do is remind you that if you are in the Crowdcast classroom, you can submit a question under the ask a question button. Um, it's a white text button and then you can click the red button to submit your question. You can also upvote other questions. So if there are quite a few, I will go based on the number of votes. And if you missed last week's session, the very top of the Crowdcast classroom, it says schedule. It's kind of a toggle. It doesn't look like a toggle, but you can press the more button and that will show you all four sessions. So when today's session is over, it'll automatically bring people into next week's. And so folk, new folks can register and that's what we'll be kind of gearing up. But at that time, you can go back and watch the replay for today's session. Or right now, you can go back and watch the replay for last week's session. I have also have those linked directly on the registration page. Um, and I will link that for you guys here in case you need to see that. Ooh. Actually, the easiest thing for me, I will type it in the chat box here. Each of the links um, are our sessions, has a number. And so session one was last week's. Right now, we're in session two. And so that's in the chat box for you guys. 
Um, because of the number of people here, we've got 53 on live, 399 registered. And oh my God, amazing! Thank you guys. Um, I'm not able to manage the chat as much as I would like, so please do submit questions for me in that question area. Um, particularly as we start going through the handout, and at that time, I will. Um, it'll be harder, even harder for me at that, at that point. I'm going to try to do a screen share. I'm not 100% sure it's going to work, but I will post the link again for you guys. So here it's in the chat box. Here's the link to our worksheet. This is a brand new finishing worksheet. I just finished this this morning. So let me know if you have any questions or want more clarification or see any typos. Um, I try to distill everything that I want to teach about finishing into two pages. Like here is the big picture framework. Now many of you may know that I teach a class called the finishing project. This is a class that's included with our membership program and that's a like a full four week class with lots of worksheets like this, um, tons of different types of project examples and really like a, a, a paced out approach where I'm constantly emailing you and, and nudging you along. But this is kind of the, the quick and dirty version um, if you don't want to work um, over time inside of that classroom environment. Or if you're just more of a self-starter and want, want to DIY it. All right, so again, green button, free finishing worksheet, or in the chat box. We're going to start walking through that, and I'm going to have an attempt at sharing my screen. And if it doesn't work, we'll just talk through it. All right. Okay. okay, and there we go. So our, the screen is as big as it can get. My head is tiny. Um, if you are on a smaller device or have trouble reading it, go ahead and bring up that worksheet in a new tab or download it wherever you can. So this is a two-page worksheet, and the first page is the clarity page. This is where I really want you to think about why this, what's the project you're focusing on, and why is it not finished? So the first thing I ask you to do is to actually write down what is the project you want to finish. Because without basically putting a name to it, your brain will continue muddling around on, oh, this project I need to finish, and this one I need to get done, and there's a stack of these different projects that are over there in the corner that I need to finish. And so you can't choose the stack in the corner. You have to choose what is the one project, what's the story it is, or the, the album that it's in, or the blue album, whatever label you want to put on it, I need you to put a name to it. So that's, that, that's the first step in clarity is putting a name to it. And then I want you to think back. I want you to think to when you started this project. And what was the motivation behind it? What got you excited about it? What were the stories you wanted to tell? Or what was the, the techniques and scrapbooking that you wanted to use? What were your motivations behind starting this project? Because one of the surest ways to get back in to an unfinished project is to really feel rooted in the why behind it. Because when you do that, you'll feel a greater sense of ease at making any course corrections. Because your project is not finished for a reason. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. But the more that you can feel totally at ease with the meaning behind it, the more you're going to be able to adapt and be willing to, to simplify, to streamline, to do something a little bit differently so that you can finish because you know that the essence is still there and that the meaning behind it is still captured, even if it's not the exact visual perfection that you had uh, imagined at the outset. All right, so that's the first column on the first page. The second column is a checklist, and this is kind of a brainstorming checklist to start teasing apart why this particular project is not finished. I don't want you to think about any other project, but what are some of the reasons why this project isn't finished? Did you lose interest? Did you get overwhelmed? Did you get stuck on photos? 
Did you get stuck on supplies or products? Um, was there kind of like a design challenge? Really think about why this project didn't get finished and try to try to narrow it down as much as you can. Now you're free to lit, to check one box or as many as, as feel comfortable, but you really want to hone in on what is that root cause of you not finishing. And above all, you need to be kind of gentle with yourself and know that it's not a character flaw that you weren't able to finish because of this reason, but that now that you have this heightened sense of awareness about why, you can start working through it. You can start working around it, finding you know a shortcut around it. You can start um, really trying to find solutions so that this is no longer a problem for this project and solutions that will help you going into the future as well so that you can finish more of your future projects. So this is a really, really important part of the exercise because each one of you out there is gonna check different boxes. We, we don't finish for different reasons because we're all so unique and the way we experience this process of creativity is, is so variable. Some of us love digging into the photos and some of us love playing with the products and some of us love writing the journal line. We all have different parts that we love and different parts that become a struggle. All right, so that's the first part. All right, again, I want to remind you that you can see there's 16 different options here in the second column. This was the clarity page. This is kind of getting the firm foundation and understanding of where you are right now with this particular project. All right, the second page is the focus page. This is what's gonna help you take action. Kind of with this understanding in mind, first I'm gonna ask you, how are you going to bust through one of those biggest roadblocks? So look at that list in the previous page, which one is a really recurring challenge for you or the biggest reason this project isn't finished. And I want you to start thinking of ideas of how you can avoid that, work through it, work around it, or make a course correction. It doesn't mean you're gonna employ all of them, but I want you to start thinking of possible solutions. Some of them might be uncomfortable. Um, in some cases, it could be not finishing the project. That's always an option. You can work through this, feel really um, good about where you're going, and then realize, you know what? The best choice for me here is to not finish and to just be okay with the way the project is right now and call that good enough. That's always an option. So I want you to think through those possible solutions for those roadblocks. And then I really want you to start thinking about the project itself and moving forward. But before you ever do anything, you need to think about what do you need to get started? Because the last thing I want you to do is, is to sit down, ready to start, and then get frustrated again for all new reasons. And so it's helpful to identify any information, any supplies, photos, what are all the different things you need to gather to get back into this project? Because we all know as time goes by, your project probably isn't all in one place anymore. Maybe you ended up moving some of the tools you were using. Maybe some of the things are on your computer and some are in real life. You need to kind of regather, know where everything is that you need so that you kind of don't introduce a brand new barrier right off the bat. Because that's the surest way to continuing to not finish this project. All right, and now here's where it gets really, really good. I want you to think of this project, think of where you are right now, draw a line in the sand, this is where I'm at, and this is where I'm going. And I want you to identify three different phases. Now they don't have to all be of the same duration, but I want you to think about three different types of activities you're gonna go through to finish. So here's an example. If I am finishing project life for 2012, the first thing, I'm, the first phase is identifying my photos. I'm identifying them on my computer and printing them, okay? The second phase for me is inserting all of the pocket cards, kind of doing the design of how it's all gonna fit together and inserting my photos. 
The third phase for me is writing the journaling and doing any finishing touches of embellishing. Now, one thing to remember here is that that project life process may sound familiar to you or that may be not how you work. So the three phases are gonna be totally custom to your workflow and your process in scrapbooking. But when you take that pause to think about, okay, what are the groups of activities I do? It makes it feel less overwhelming and it gives you milestones. Because in the next column, I'm gonna have you list out what are the 16 tasks that you need to complete in order to finish this project. And so some of those tasks are gonna be in phase one, some are gonna be in phase two, and some are gonna be in phase three. And if you want, you can even mark those on your sheet, draw a line, highlight, whatever you need to do, but that gives you a milestone so that you can really feel like you're moving forward, not just on the small tasks, but in big chunks to see that you are making progress towards the finish. All right, now the final ingredient in finishing is follow through. And that's why I have check boxes on here. Because again, you need to be marking up your progress and seeing that you are moving forward because that momentum will keep you going. And the follow through component also comes in in the fact that you actually wrote all of this down. You didn't just mentally say, oh, I'm gonna finish this project. You put it on paper, you committed it to a plan, you wrote down each action item, and then you can keep revisiting this, adjusting it as needed, adding notes, checking things off so that you can keep moving forward. And then when you get uh, frustrated or overwhelmed, flip back to the first page and think about why you're working on this project. Think about what it means to you and how you will feel when you get finished. And so with this piece of paper in hand, you will be more capable of following through than if you just said, oh, I'd like to finish that. And then if you want to add another level, make a public statement. State here in the chat room, state in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, or join us in the membership, but make a public statement to say, this is the project that I'm finishing, and I would love your support and encouragement in going forward. You can also post on Instagram with the hashtag Simple Scrapper to tell us what project are you finishing in the Festival of Finishing, because we would love to hear that. All right, guys, that is the worksheet. I would love to take any questions that you guys have. I am gonna go ahead and stop sharing so that we can focus on those questions. Again, if you're just joining us, you can get that free finishing worksheet with the green button in Crowdcast. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, jump over to Crowdcast, log in, and you can get that worksheet to participate along with us. Um, if you have any questions about the worksheet or about struggles that you have or obstacles you have in finishing, I would love to answer those now. Just click the ask a question button and we'll use the last few minutes for that. All right, check out the chat box here. Wendy says 99% of her unfinished projects are because she is missing journaling. So my recommendation for you, Wendy, is to start, is make a list, make your own checklist. Your 16 spots there could just be the individual layouts. And if you have more than 16, just start with 16. And then commit, maybe one a night, sit down and write your journaling, check it off. Tomorrow, write one more. But by focusing on this and making it a priority, you can get those layouts written on. All right, let's see what questions we have today. All right, Clemencia asks, how do you choose from all the unfinished projects you have? So what I recommend, and, and I talked a little bit about this last week in our December daily discussion, is focusing on one that feels exciting. Now, whether that's exciting because of the topic or exciting because of the products, you wanna focus on one that feels the most fun to finish. And I want to encourage you to shy away or at least pause on projects that feel important or have a legacy value or just are truly deeply meaningful. And it doesn't mean those can't also be fun, but those projects tend to have more of the anxiety associated with them. They often sometimes require more photos or more important photos and more kind of the emotional hangups can block your path more than just kind of logistical ones with design or other types of hurdles in scrapbooking. 
And so I want to push you towards fun to get the ball rolling, even if it's just a small project, to finish something fun first, or even just make one layout, but get the ball rolling with something fun before you tackle something that's a little bit harder, even if it's something that you would really love to have finished, because that will kind of give you the positive outlook you need and the momentum to keep going forward. All right. All right, Nicole's got a really good question for us. How would you tackle a redo project? I have an album I did test, and I really need to figure out a, a way to redo this trip in a simpler album. So the first question that I would ask you is whether or not you have the photos on your computer. Like, do you have digital copies of these photos, even if they're scanned negatives or scanned prints? Because oftentimes, it can be frustrating to disassemble an album that has already been adhered to a page. So if you have that opportunity, even if it's just scanning the pages you already have and, re and cropping and reprinting those photos, you might find more ease in the process from doing that than trying to disassemble it. So let's, let's go from there for now. Assuming that you can get fresh photos, I think that's gonna be the best kind of perspective for you. The next thing to do is to think about the format. I want you to think about what hurdles you had in completing this format, or what, in, in your particular case, what hurdle, what, what makes you dislike this album so much? Is it just the style of products you used? But then to think through, do you really wanna create, recreate it in the same style? If it's layouts, do you still wanna make layouts of the same dimensions? Do you want to make smaller layouts? Do you want to do pocket pages? Do you want to take those those digital copies and put them into a photo book? So you need to think about what is the simplest format that would still satisfy you creatively and give you a finished project product. All right. So great. Nicole does say that she has she has the photos and she would love to reprint them. So that you could make, you could use a photo book. I, I'll reach up here, excuse me. I have these, these are the Artifact Uprising books. They're five and a half by five and a half, super cute. And they're minimalist. So there's options from super minimalist to lots of layouts. You could do a mini book. Think about what format's gonna fill you up right now, both um, in the enjoyment of the process and the appreciation of it later. And focus on that. Um, and so in your case, you can do that. If you're in a situation where you can't reprint the photos, if your originals are on the page, they have embellishments on top of them, and you detest the album, which, Nicole, it sounds like that's not the case for you. But if you out there are in that boat, I would probably encourage you to first consider whether or not you could still live with it. And know that that, it's just, that, that, that is part of your history as a scrapbooker and that with time you may learn to appreciate it more even if it's not consistent with the rest of your projects um a, a way to help with that feeling is to maybe do kind of a spin-off project using some of the photos or related photos that weren't in this project that are part of your regular albums and Make sure that this particular story of the project you don't like are included elsewhere in a way that you are comfortable with. It's not re totally recreating it because it sounds like it's a bigger project, but it's um, making sure those stories, you know, it's, it's words and a few photos are in your albums in another capacity to make you feel more content with having this album that you don't like. So that's just a few ideas to think about, and hopefully there's a scenario that will work for each of you out there. I'm so glad to see so many lovely comments in the chat room today. Um, I'll just go ahead and, uh, I did comment on this question. Uh, Carmel asks, is this festival finishing, did it start on September 19th? So yeah, so the way it works is that this is one event in Crowdcast called the Festival of Finishing, and there's four sessions underneath. So one registration, if you're already in, registers you for all the sessions, we'll send you reminders. All you have to do is, is jump on and participate. Um, 
If you're joining us new and you're visiting the Crowdcast link for the first time, it will send you probably to the next session, as soon as this one is over live. Um, and so you'll see that countdown to when our next session is. The only glitch here is if you do go to our Simple Scrapper profile on Crowdcast, it's not going to show future events. It'll just show uh, the festival in past events. So that's kind of a weird thing um, that they're working out as a tech hurdle based on the platform. But this event is in progress through October 18th, and then October 19th, we'll be jumping into our next member retreat. All right. Oh, April wants to see the Artifact Uprising book. Okay. So this is one that I created about what I ate 2011 to 2016. It is only Instagram photos. Um, so I used the, I don't believe I used the app on this one. I believe I just used the website to pull Instagram photos. And it was all food and selfies from that time frame. So one of the things I love about Artifact Uprising and some of the other services as well is they can kind of slurp your social media feeds and then you can select which photos to include. So here we got another one. This is a healthier one. So we have me, it's the summer, and then me eating very, you know, paleo-ish here. Um, it is a, a glued binding. They're pretty durable. The paper is matte. It's not glossy. So there's no sheen to it. Uh, it is not, it is, it is offset printed, it is not photographic paper. Um, so it's important to kind of keep that in mind. It's not going to look like a persnickety photo or a, a, fo a regular photo print. It looks like a book. It feels more like a book than a photo. But I have a whole series of these. I'm going to reach up again here. Um, I did one, I have done one for each year of my daughter's life. We have a foot photo on the front of each one. And I use almost predominantly Instagram photos in those as well. Um, so it's just a supplement to my hobby and something that I really loved working on as a way to get more of those photos off my computer and into the real world um, as a supplement to, to scrapbooking. This one, and almost all, they're all photos. There's no words. You can add journaling, but I focus just on photos. And we also, I always order multiple copies here and give them as gifts. They make, yeah, cute little gifts. All right. That is all the questions I have here today. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me in the festival finishing. And I hope you will stick around and join us next week. The next session is titled, Starting Fresh When You Aren't Finished. This is how you can kind of create a, a more positive mindset when you have a lot of unfinished projects weighing you down, and how you can kind of feel that sense of pushing the reset button um, with this finishing framework worksheet and with some other approaches when you have all these things that you want to get done, when you don't feel caught up. So it's a little bit of a mindset show, um, and I think we'll have a lot of fun with it. And then finally, on October 10th, we have Be a Finisher. We're kind of going to do a full master class on how to be a finisher going forward. So I'm going to, this, is, this part is giving you all the tools to finish a project, and then I'm going to give you some techniques in the last show on how you can start more projects that you do finish. And then we're going to go through our quarterly planning process as part of that. Um, because there's kind of two components to starting projects that are finished, that you can finish. And one is, like, what does that project look like and making really good decisions that fill you up and fit your life. And then the other part is, how does that fit into your schedule? And how is that a practical thing and how do you focus and narrow it down so that you're not trying to do too much. And we'll get on to all of that on October 10th. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me again. My name is Jennifer Wilson. I am so grateful that I get to spend time with you guys each week talking about scrapbooking. I hope you have a terrific remainder to your week. Take care.